Hey, so in this video I'm going to explain all of the options we've got in Microthema for selecting elements on the page. Uh, so the most basic way to work with Microthema is just to point on something and click it. So we've got this heading selected here. Uh, what we have on the top is um, uh, the uh, a selector. There's always a default selector. And Microthema always creates um, initially a selector that just targets this single element here. Uh, so we might have a uh, another, we might want to select these other headings with, um, with a different selector, but and we can choose that from the drop down. So I can choose this, for instance. But by default, it's always just the single thing we clicked. If for some reason we don't want Microthema to be in selection mode, we can turn turn off targeting mode here, uh, and that's useful if, uh, say, we're working with a page builder where we want the page builder's UI to be in place instead of Microthema's. Or we want to like follow links by like clicking on this button. But uh, as you can see here, there's also uh, you don't have to turn off targeting mode to follow uh, links within your site. If you just hold control and click a link, it will follow the link uh, instead of selecting it for editing. So let's just turn um, oops, turn targeting mode back on. So we've actually got um, three different places where we can fine tune our selector. We've already looked at this drop down menu here, which um, shows us at the top uh, one suggestion. Select a suggestion for targeting just this element, and then suggestions for targeting four, and more, and, and ever increasing numbers of elements on the page. Uh, this option is useful. Um, you haven't got loads of screen space, so you don't want to have these advanced options expanded. Um, it's the same information, and it's also easiest if you're going to search for something. So um, if I have a look here, so, uh, so let's say we wanted to choose uh, an option that has um, targets for um, all four elements. But instead of using Grid Pro features, we uh, we wanted to, we already knew that we wanted to use um, the class Other Features. Um, when when there's a dot and then some text without a space, that's that's referencing a class. So what we could do is use this box here to search for other features. And if you've got a very long list of suggestions. Um, the number of suggestions uh, varies. It depends on kind of the HTML of the page and how things have been structured. Sometimes there's a long list. It's really useful to be able to search them all, um, as opposed to uh, just go to that. Uh, as opposed to this here, um, where we've got uh, we haven't got a search feature for all of the uh, all of the sets of options. Um, just uh, we can just search within, say. Um, if we want to search just the options where there's four, then again, this is better actually because you then uh, you know that you're only searching in uh, selector suggestions that will target four elements. Um, and this view is better as well if um, you're interested in the specific uh, code of the CSS selectors and the HTML. Um, if all of this is very meaningful to you, um, then and you've got enough screen space to have these options expanded the whole time, then it's best to have these options open um, and work with these directly. But if you don't have so much screen space, um, you don't have to have these options open. You get the same, um, exactly the same set as that's shown in the right-hand side of the targeting of the inspection pane um, available here. Uh, and so this is this is useful just because um, you're always going to be close to uh, these options when you select something, and it just gives you the same functionality. Um, this is purely just to cater for people with different screen sizes. Um, there is actually one extra feature though here um, that's only available with these breadcrumbs. Um, so it has you notice here there's some breadcrumbs, and down here at the bottom there's some breadcrumbs, um, and they're similar. It's just that. The breadcrumbs here that I can use to switch between the heading and the container element, um, that on, they only show elements that are tightly nested together. So what, what I mean by nested together is that they, the, the left edge of this heading and the top edge of this heading completely matches the left edge of the container element and the top edge. Because with nested elements, Sometimes um, it can be a bit tricky to select the container element when it's filled entirely with content inside without any space in between. Like in the case of here, there's a paragraph and a heading. If I click between them, I can actually select the uh, container element. But that might not always be the case. And so this, this option here is really useful. A, for just showing you, making you aware that there are some tightly nested elements. 
Um, if I just expand the HTML, you can see what I mean a bit more, actually. Um, so the, there's a heading here. This is the HTML for a heading. And then there is a container element here. Um, and they occupy exactly the same space at the top left and uh, top and left edges. So um, that's a new feature in Microsoft Theme 7 that's really handy. So let's talk a little bit more about the options here. So I've selected this single heading here. Um, and there's four of them in this section. And we can see that there is an option for four. And there's an option for seven. Uh, the seven, I guess, presumably targets, yeah, so there's also headings up here, in case we wanted to style all of them the same way. Um, but what you won't see is an option for styling, say, just the top one, just the um, the, the top one and the second one. Because um, that's because that's what we might call a slightly more regular selector. But you can, uh, we can go ahead and do that. So if I click on one, at the top one, and then I hold the shift key and then click on the second one, then Microtheme will come up with a custom selector for both of these. So that's an option for um, to use when the options over here don't cater for exactly what you need. Um, but it's always worth checking first, because um, most of the time um, you will want to use a slightly more conventional selector, like targeting all of the styling all of the headings in this section in the same way. And Microtheme should find those. Um, so let's look now at another example where <clears throat> we're actually talking about the the HTML um, uh, that's shown uh, and how it, how it relates to the CSS. So I've already created a selector here uh, for this uh, site, this heading here. In fact, I might just delete that so we can. Whoops! So it just defaults back to the last selector I created, which is up here. So let's go back down here. So I'm going to click on this heading here, uh, so we can see the full set of suggestions. Um, before creating a selector. Um, and what Microthema does by default is it has the, um, it favors IDs. So it'll try and target what, whenever we click, uh, referencing an ID, either on the element if it has one or a parent element. Um, but we can adjust that to uh, instead uh, prefer using a class. And that's useful. Um, the difference between an ID and a class is there's only one ID on, the, on any given page. Um, so here it's site footer, um, whereas a class might be applied sporadically throughout the page. Um, there might be multiple ones. And so sometimes if we want to, say, target all, all, all buttons on the page or something like that, we would rather use a class than an ID. And so this just helps you. By the way, Microsoft does find, it finds both. It's just further down the list. So that the header footer group. It's still in the list, it's just on, if we switch to low, it's just the priority. Um, so it just saves us some time from searching lists. But, uh, okay, so let's talk a little bit about what class is and what an ID is. Um, so here I've got header footer group, and you can see um, over here the selected element that we're on has um, has this class. So it's class equals, and then in blue you've got the attribute, and it'll either be an ID or a class. And that's why the, the color coding here gives you a little hint as to um, what that means. Um, and the space between um, two pieces of text uh, has some meaning as well. Actually, I've just seen that um, I was talking about this class, um, which is actually shown here. That's a different selector to, to the one we've got selected here. Um, so th what's happening here is we're referencing um, this class and then a heading two. And what that means is some element with this header footer group class and then inside that a child element a h2 uh, and so this is the footer class um, this is the element that has the footer class uh, it's this container element for the whole footer header footer group and then inside that we've got a h2 and that's what this refers to and so when microthema is coming up with selector suggestions what it does is it basically scans um, the html classes and ids of the element you clicked and all of the parent elements and then comes up with a list of potential selectors you might want to use. Uh, and then it organizes those based on how, which, how many elements they target. So um, this is the first uh, group is always for one element. The second group here is for these two. And it looks like there's another two um, elements, uh, two H2 elements, in fact, um, which includes this one that we clicked and is somewhere else on the page. But we can see that the highlighting isn't quite right. 
um, when we click this one. So if we, well, assuming we wanted to target this and this, which have both been centered left, um, we just need to look at the, the fact that the highlighting matches um, what we're expecting when we're choosing these options here. And the two options um, for ho creating a hover selector or a page ID specific selector, they're just shortcuts for what's available uh, in the full set of um, modifier CSS selector modifiers menu here, where we've got like focus, we can do nth child stuff. This is a uh, just a good reference point for what's possible with types of selectors. So a hover selector, that just means that uh, the styling that we apply here will only uh, come into effect when the user hovers their mouse over the element that we're styling. And the uh, page ID um, option, what that does is it just guarantees that the selector we've created only affects the current page. If we disable that, then um, this, uh, this, all of the selectors here, they, they may affect just the current page, but they may affect other pages because Microthema's CSS is global by default. Um, and so you can limit the scope of, uh, a, a given selector to the current page by just enabling this option here. And the little lock sign just tells us that this will stay on once we've enabled it. Because it's quite common that you'll want to, um, say work on a section, um, of, of, of a page and keep and have all of the selectors targeted just at that one page. Um, so you can then turn it off if you uh, create a selector, say, for the footer, which you know is on every page. So that's the selector suggestions covered. Um, moving on to this section here, actually, before I do that, something I just forgot to mention. Um, when you are hovering over an element, you can either click it to select it or you can press the Alt key to select it instead of clicking. Um, that's useful if you want to select um, something like a, a HTML select element, which um, can't be clicked um, or can't be selected when clicked um, for technical reasons, um, or some other element on the page that, say, if you were to click it, it, it would have some behavior like opening a light box or something like that, which you don't want to trigger. Um, so that's useful to know. Um, and then uh, up the top here, um, we've already covered the select suggestions. Um, there is a field for uh, giving selectors a label. I think we'll give one by default, but I could say, you know, um, uninstall paragraph. So it's something that's a little bit more meaningful to me. You don't have to do that as you're creating each selector, but it, you can go back and do that um, later um, just by using the folder option or, or, or just navigating to the selector and then changing it in the, t the name in the top bar. Um, but just so you know, that option's there. Um, and, uh, yeah, because I've added a custom name, the auto naming feature has been turned off. Um, so if I was to like reselect something here, then it would still keep my, my label. Um, so that's sometimes quite useful. Um, and, um, all selectors are added to the general folder unless you choose a specific folder by choosing one from the, the list of options or say, um, adding your own folder. Um, it's quite good to organize selectors into a, an individual folder for each page that you're working on. Uh, and, oh yeah, and also there's um, an option to, to sync the uh, label with the code. So uh, that will overwrite my custom selector. But um, sometimes you the information that's most relevant to you is actually the CSS code. Um, and so it's, you might want to just keep your code and your label completely synced. Um, but when you're working with things like page builders, where they use like sort of random strings of numbers and letters, um, you probably find that this uh, option uh, isn't really so useful because it's not very meaningful to see like a, a long list of numbers and letters as, as the label. So this is really handy for when you're working with page builders. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and save that selector just to let you know that uh, yeah, this is what I meant by you can select the label, uh, change the, the label anytime, and you can iterate forwards and backwards um, through your selectors and, and do the organization bit towards the end if you like. Uh, so you just saw me using these buttons actually, and this is maybe worth explaining. Um, so this just allows you to navigate between all of your selectors. So I've only got two here. Um, I've got the uh, this paragraph selector here, um, and if, uh, but what, what it does is it essentially it, it navigates between all of the selectors in the folder. So if I go left here, uh, it will go up to this one. Or if I go right, it will go to this one down here. Um, if I wanted to change the targeting of this 
uh, current selector, where at the moment it only targets one paragraph, but say I wanted it to target all four of these paragraphs, what I would use is this retarget selector option. So if I click that, I can then choose an, an alternative option from the list. Uh, so I'm just going to choose this option for four, uh, and then that will tell me what that's going to affect, and then to confirm I just click update. And I think that covers everything I wanted to talk about in this selection video, so thank you for watching.